One player on the New York Rangers who I think is being underrated by a lot of Rangers fans and other fans around the league is Blake Wheeler. Now, he has one of the best value contracts in this past offseason. He signed for one year, 800K deal with 300K in total bonuses, so he can make up to $1.1 million. He basically said, you know what? I've already made a bunch of money in my career. I don't really care about money at all. I want to go to where I want to go. I want to go on a good team, and I want to play in New York, and I want to try and win a Stanley Cup. And a decent amount of people have said, he, you know, he's old. He's into his late 30s. He's kind of past his prime. He's kind of done. And I, I, don't, I don't agree with that at all. I, I completely disagree with that because he is turning 37 August 31st. Yes, I know that. I 100% agree. He is kind of getting older, and he is past his prime 100%. I'm not saying he isn't. But if you take a look at his playing style, if you've watched him play over the years, you will see he is not a guy like a Connor McDavid or a Dylan Larkin. I'm not saying Connor McDavid is going to be bad when he's 37. I think he's still going to be an amazing player. But I'm not. He, he's not that super speed kind of guy who uses all of his speed to beat defenders and all that kind of stuff. He does not do that. He is a six foot five, 225 pound winger. He is a big power forward, super strong in the puck. Uses his body to shield it off. You know, good hands, good shot, good passing, but is a very smart player. But he's six foot five, 225 pounder. He's a true power forward. And there's not a whole lot of these power forward kind of guys left in the game, but he is a true, like, legit power forward. And at six foot five, there is no reason to think he's going to be a bad player for the Rangers. And he's 100% going to be a top six forward on this team come next season. I, I can pretty much guarantee it. Because with his skill set, his playing style, he fits perfectly in the top six with the Rangers. I think him and Zibanejad with maybe Kreider, maybe Lafreniere, I, I think could be an absolutely amazing line. And I, I do think that him and Zibanejad should be paired together. I think their games kind of complement each other. And I think Wheeler's playmaking abilities and all that kind of stuff really does work well with a guy like Zibanejad. And on the power play, I think he should be on the first power play just because of his playmaking skills. I know we have Panarin and Foxy as well, but maybe maybe you do want to have him on the second power play, and that's fine. But I think with his skill set and all that stuff, I don't see why he's not going to be a 60, 65, 70 point per game kind of guy. I think minimum we're going to see is on pace for 60 points. Now, maybe he doesn't hit 60 points because he only plays 65 games in the regular season. That is possible. The last couple of years, he's played 72, 65, 50, and 71 games. So obviously he's been hurt a bit. Not like the healthiest guy as of late, but over his career for the most part, has been pretty healthy. I mean, had a stretch there of like, you know, six years in a row almost where he was playing like nearly 82, 81 games per season. So not bad at all. He's had a lot of healthier years where he's been really healthy, played pretty much the full amount of games. And if he can stay healthy, let's say he plays a full 82 games and he's playing, you know, first and second line power play here and there, a bit up and down in the power play time. But for the most part, you know, first and second power play, being a top six forward, I would fully expect him on the Rangers to have 70 kind of points. If he's playing a full 82 game season, I would expect minimum 70 points because he's that kind of guy. He's that kind of player. He's still a great player. And over the last couple of years, he hasn't been a heavily reliant player on power play points either. I mean, last year had 55 points in 72 games played and only 15 were on the power play. He had 40 even strength points in 42 games played. That is not bad at all. And on the Rangers, he might he might more than likely out. Maybe will have more power play two time than PP one time. And that's fine. I think a guy like Kim can still excel in the power play too. With a guy like Lafreniere, with a Kaka, with a Heedel, with a Trocheck, whoever it is on that second power play. Maybe Zach Jones quarterback in that. We'll have to wait and see, or maybe it's true, but we'll, who knows at this point. But I just think he's still going to be a great player for the Rangers, and I am so excited to see what he can do on a top six in the New York Rangers with all these great forwards. I know, obviously, Winnipeg has some great forwards as well, but I think pairing him with a guy like Zibanejad could be an amazing combo, and we could see a guy who's going to be 37 years old who has a point per game with the Rangers just because of who he's playing with and what line he's on with the guy like Zibanejad, who's obviously an elite player. I, I just, I, I'm so excited to see what can happen. And maybe I'm overrating him a bit. Maybe you guys think I'm crazy, but I think he can truly be a near point per game guy if he stays healthy this year. I just think he's a fantastic player. Yes, he's 37, but his game's never been speed. So if he loses an edge uh, speed wise, I, I mean, I'm sure he's lost a couple steps over the last couple of years, being that he's getting into his you know mid to late 30s now. But I just think he's still going to be a great player. Last year, he only had 17 minutes, three seconds per night as well, and still had 55 points in 72 games played, 15 points in the power play. Like his ice time went down for the previous years. You know, in 2021, 2022, he averaged 19 minutes of 32 seconds per night, comparing that to this past season where he had about 17 minutes flat. 
That's about two and a half minute difference. That's seven, eight shifts per night that he lost compared to the previous year. And he still had 55 points in 72 games played, which is fantastic compared to the previous year where he had 60 points in 65 games played with that extra two and a half minutes of ice time. So the numbers didn't drop off that much. Take a look at the takeaway giveaway ratio. It is absolutely nuts. Comparing the takeaways, Blake Wheeler had 45, Panarin had 36. Okay, so not that bad. Take a look at the giveaways though. Blake Wheeler had 27. Comparing that to Panarin, who had 102. Panarin almost had four times the amount of giveaways that Blake Wheeler did. Take a look at the defensive zone giveaways. Panarin had 31. Blake Wheeler only had 14. Take a look at the face-offs. Face-off percentage, Blake Wheeler had 51.6. Comparing that to Panarin, who had 31.6. These are absolutely nuts numbers, okay? Shots blocked. 11 for Panarin. 35 for Blake Wheeler. Overall, though, it just goes to show that Blake Wheeler is still a fantastic top six forward in this league and is definitely going to be an amazing addition to this team, provide some great veteran leadership, has a ton of playoff experience, a total of 65 games played, 45 points over his playoff career. This past season had two goals, four assists, six points before losing to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. But anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed. If you guys have, please smash the like button and definitely comment down below your guys' thoughts on Blake Wheeler and how big an impact do you think he's going to have on this New York Rangers team.